The first episode of The Mandalorian Season 3 is out, so let's give it a review. Granted, we are going to be covering spoilers, so if you haven't seen the episode, make sure you like the video, subscribe if you're new, go watch it, and then come back. The first thing you should know is that timeline-wise, if you haven't watched The Book of Boba Fett, you probably should before starting this season. They've basically made it imperative for you to watch that in order to understand the full scope of what this season is trying to set up. And you have completed your quest. I have. This isn't going to be a full recap video of everything that happened in the episode, I'm just pointing out some things that truly struck out to me, including quite possibly one of the greatest cold opens in Star Wars cinematic history, as we finally get to see the initiation of a new member of the Children of the Watch faction of the Mandalorian culture. Sort of a baptism of fire, if you will. This scene in particular exemplified everything that we love about the Mandalorians, their culture, their desire to work as a cohesive unit, and their commitment to the Mandalorian Creed. From this moment on, I shall never remove my helmet. As the initiation is happening, of course, we're going to see a huge ass monster because it's the season premiere for the Mandalorian. Ooh. This one proves to be quite formidable, however, as a full battalion of Mandalorians in their prime is not able to contain it. But then our boys Din Djarin and Baby Grogu are able to come in and obviously steal the show from the jump. Oh, hi, Mark. Great action from the beginning, but the best part about it is that it's serving a narrative purpose to move the plot along. We appreciate this because following that debacle, we see the armorer have a tough conversation with the Mandalorian, which serves to recap exactly what we know so far. Din Djarin is still officially labeled as an apostate, the name of the episode. Ergo, he is exiled completely from Mandalorian culture until he's able to atone for his sin. Which, if you didn't know, is taking off the Beskar helmet. If you're a Children of the Watch member, once you put it on, you never take it off. Seems a bit extreme to me since there's actually some loopholes. If you're in private, you can take it off, and technically, since droids are not alive, you can also take it off then, so it's crazy, but he has to do it. So so, it appears that the season is going to be centered around Din Djarin's redemption and the consequences that will bring both to the Mandalorians that surround him and the people around the galaxy. Inside this conversation, we also get a key piece of the puzzle. Mando is able to show a crystallized relic to the armorer, which is meant to come straight from planet Mandalore. She's interested, but she doesn't buy it completely, giving us this little snippet. And this relic only proves that Mandalore's entire surface has been crystallized by fusion rays. She basically says, nah fam, this doesn't prove that Mandalore is still livable, it just means that the surface has been totally crystallized. There are two opposing points of view. You might have noticed this goes directly against Bo-Katan's theory that Mandalore is actually not cursed and the planet is habitable. Ironically, both of these points of view serve to exemplify exactly how the Mandalore culture is split right now. One side thinking everything is lost and the other being hopeful for the future. Okay, back to the story. The armorer says, nah fam, and Din Djarin is like, okay bet, what if I go to Mandalore, bathe in the living waters in the mines, and then come back with proof that I actually did it. Am I good? In typical Mandalorian fashion, this is the way. This episode did three things extremely well. Number one, provide context. Especially when it comes to the timeline, as Jon Favreau and Dave Filoni confirmed that season one and season two occur over multiple years. Which also extends to Grogu, as it's officially confirmed that he's been training with Luke Skywalker for two years before returning to Din Djarin. Get back up. So it was great to get a little bit more context into what has been happening in order to fully get us invested into Mando's journey. Doing so with a slight recap through conversation at the beginning is a great way to get new audiences interested in what's happened before. Number two, they brought back everything that we love about Star Wars. There's unique references to other projects within the universe. For example, in the hyperspace scene where we get to see baby Grogu and Mando stroll throughout the galaxy, we get to see Grogu marvel at the Pergil that are flying through hyperspace space with them. This is a well-placed and subtle reference to Star Wars Rebels and even the High Republic, emphasizing the fact that Dave Filoni and Jon Favreau are committed to making seamless connections between different Star Wars projects in order to set up the future of the franchise. We also got a solid amount of classic Star Wars action, both in the ground and in space. Just like you, I was a really big fan of the Mando Starfighter scene against the pirates. Finally, number three, teasing the structure of the season while keeping an air of mystery. By the end of the episode, we are able to see some pretty cool things happen. Din Djarin is able to visit Grief Karga in Navarro. That's High Magistrate Karga to you. 
and see the full progression of the trade planet from a barren wasteland in season one to a full trade intergalactic hotspot in season three. We also get to see the fact that IG-11 is being venerated as a symbol of fighting against the Empire. Do you remember your old friend? and is most likely going to return as soon as they're able to repair him. Speaking about IG-11 now, uh, there's a pretty cool movie Easter egg in that reparation scene. IG-11 is able to be powered up again, but his memory core is damaged. So it makes sense that once he's able to be powered back, he reverts to his original programming and of course tries to disintegrate the asset, AKA Grogu, in the same manner that the T-800 does it in the first Terminator movie. But the most important teases happen at the end of the episode when Din Djarin is taking Grogu on his journey of atonement in order to become a part of Mandalorian culture. They land in Kalamara, which is a moon in the Mandalore system. This is Kalabala. We get to see a huge castle, a droid, and in typical House of the Dragon fashion, we are reintroduced to Katie Sackhoff's character Bo-Katan sitting on a throne worthy of a queen. At this point, through a stressful and yet witty conversation between Bo-Katan and Mando, we learn that the military group from the Mandalorians that we saw in season two has fractured into mercenary factions. And she insists that if all Din Djarin wants to do is to bring back the Mandalorians, all he has to do is find them all and wave the dark saber around for them to follow him. She is dejected, hopeless, and believes that the children of the Watch have corrupted their Mandalorian heritage to the extent that the surviving traces of Mandalore might as well just be a defunct relic of the past. By giving us all this context in one condensed scene, we are able to see where the story is going to go. Mando's atonement in the minds of Mandalore, with Grogu helping him along the way to accomplish that goal and bring IG-11 back. And finally, a test to see if Bo-Katan and the rest of the Mandalorians are able to put their differences aside and coalesce in order to bring back the glory of their planet. Overall, I think this was a banging episode. It gave us everything that we needed from a storytelling perspective, while also using some killer action set pieces as narrative transitions, which is on brand for the Star Wars lore. Everything looks cool, but it also serves a narrative function and elevates the progression of the story. The action was an A+, the story and the dialogue were also an A, and of course, the fun factor gets the Tropical Joe's seal of approval. Do you agree? Is there anything else that you wanted to see? Let me know what you thought about the episode in the comments down below.